Hey, welcome to the Alabama Takes latest endeavor, which is exclusive to the Alabama Take website and to our YouTube channel. We are called Short Takes. At the uh, beginning, we'll have a introductory bit, and then every episode will feature four questions with the fourth question remaining the same for each guest. We like to sit down with our favorite artist, and it is a pleasure for me to be talking to our first guest, Mr. Taylor Hollingsworth. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's really great to see you. It's been too long. I know, man. It really has. It's probably been over, shoot, I don't even know, man, maybe eight to ten years. It could I, have think, been. I think it might be, yes, very much eight is what I was thinking. Well, um, I'm flying once, once the kids come around. That's very true. <laughs> well, before we get into our four questions for the short takes episode, I want to set you up for viewers. People know you, I'm sure, but you're a, you're a Birmingham-based rock and roller. You've toured with various bands as well as Connor Oberst. Uh, yep. A lot of people might know you from that. And you've recently put out a new song under your name, Taylor Hollingsworth, a few days ago, and that can be found or bought on different mediums, including streaming. And that yep. tune is called Pinocchio's Kids. And I, I'll just chime in really quickly that that song's brilliant, man. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. It's really good. I've had it stuck in my head since Saturday in a good way. Good. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But also coming in a few days, uh, by the time our episode releases, honestly, it may already be out, you will have a record with this band, The Blips, which you uh, are part of with some well-known Birmingham legends, I would say. I'm pumped about it. I've already pre-ordered my copy. People can do that with uh, Cornelia Chapel Records. Yeah, and that's right. Thanks, man. What else have you been working on that, you, that, that might be coming out and you wouldn't talk about or any shows or anything in the in late April or May? Um, let's see. We have the, the Blips are working on a show. I think we've scheduled it for, uh, I want to say May 6th is the day. Um, it's going to be at a brewery here in Birmingham. Um, I'm not doing the booking, so honestly, I think I forgot which brewery it is. But uh, yeah, it'll be like our, you know, first show since like the day before the COVID shutdown. We played our first show at Seasick Records, like an in-store thing. Yeah, and everybody was in a panic, and it was like, "What is happening?" Nobody knew. I didn't know if anybody was going to come to the show or not. Uh, <laughs> And it ended up being being good, but that was it. We like literally made it on the last day, and then the next day it was like everything shut down. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You, you you've also been selling thing. paintings, right? Online recently. Uh, is yeah, that a new I, endeavor, or is that something you've dabbled in? Man, um, I started doing art. Uh, around the time when Ava was born, uh, wow. so she's eight now, so about eight years ago, um, you know, the first the first few years, I just totally didn't know what I was doing at all. I was literally using Sharpies and just drawing psychedelic weird stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it it took me a while to figure out my thing or what I was doing. Um, but yeah, now I'm, uh, I'm really excited about the, the stuff I'm doing right now. I, I think I finally have gotten to, uh, a, a place where I have my own thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm selling small ones on my website. They're all like a one foot by one foot. Uh, just so, because they're easy to ship. I actually sold some a while back. Uh, in the first few years that were bigger paintings um, and I would sh have to ship them and it was a nightmare like there were these oversized shipping fees and all this stuff and it ended up you know they would it would cost so much to ship them and kind of such a pain I just it I kind of stopped doing that after a little while I was like you know Got to figure that out another way. So did yeah. a few art shows around town, mostly at Rojo. 
Um, but now I'm hoping to kind of try to, you know, do that some more. That'd be Actually, great. I try to do Kentuck. I want to figure out how to who to talk to for that or what I got to do. So um, I'm not sure, but that's a yeah. that's a good idea too. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I think it'll fit in real well there now. My newer stuff. Yeah. Well, are you ready for the four questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right, our first question is, tell me a philosophy that you try your best to live by. Maybe why you do that. Um, you know, one of the thing, one of my personal philosophies is, in my mind, it's important, you know, one of the greatest gifts, I guess, or one of the uh, most important things people can do is create. Um, and I try to create something every single day, uh, whether that's painting, writing songs, um, obviously me and my wife created a child, which I think would be the the greatest gift you can give. But, uh, you know, that's really a, almost a defining thing between uh say a man and a robot you know it's like a robot could perfect everything eventually but you know do they have that spark of true creativity you know what i mean i do Um, so yeah i like when i write songs and put them out there or create a piece of art or whatever you know it's sort of in a way, you know, like giving birth to this creation that will now have its own life. You know, it it, it will live on past you, uh, I guess, unless our world blows up or something. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's I, I think that would be my uh, philosophy well, in life. I thought about what would you say to someone who thinks they're just not creative or they can't? produce anything if uh if you like that philosophy and you would say it's useful for others too yeah well one thing is uh you know create positivity in the world i mean you know i think people get and i understand it but people get very focused on money and and the their own image of how people see them Um, and, and, you know, I think that's human nature to some extent. Uh, I don't think that anybody can fully 100% get away from that, but I think you could try and if, and if you, you know, if you can, you know, to somebody who says they're not creative, you know, a lot of times I wonder if they really tried to be creative, you know, you don't have to. And, and when I say creative, I mean I don't. You don't have to copy something or mirror something and try to do exactly what somebody else did. But you know, you certainly could create create beauty of some sort. You know, yeah. the more the more beauty we leave here on Earth, you know, I think the happier we all are as a whole. You know, so. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. Speaking of creating, you know, that is part of what you do for a living. What's something you wish people knew about your job? Your uh, Maybe specifically music, but anything that you've done recently? Um, hmm, it's a tough one. Um, I think I wish people would look deeper into what I do. You know, I and I, I'm sure many do. I, you know, I'm not saying nobody does that. But I think a lot of times, you know, I don't consider myself a super successful musician or artist by any means. And uh, I wish... Uh, I wish people would... Could, would respect originality more and and I think that people who strive to you know 
to do something that's not what's popular at the time, you know, I wish people would look into that more, you know, on a deeper level. Do you, guess, and, and do you kind of mean mind. like unpacking the, uh, all the things that go along with, uh, making music or booking shows or, and doing the show poster, you mean that sort of stuff? I uh, know more like the actual art itself, you know, okay, like, okay. like, like diving deeper into, uh, the sound of it as a whole, um, the, the lyrics, um, you know, one thing I, I, I think I, I work on the lyrics a lot more than, I know that a lot of my friends do say. Huh. Uh, I've had many conversations with, like, a good example is the some of the guys in the Blitz. Uh, you know, a few of them have told me that lyrics really don't matter to them uh, <laughs> as long as they're not horrible. You know, but like, yes. you know, and uh, to me, I'm like very obsessed with, with the lyrics you know what i mean like yeah i um, find that surprising considering you're in the band with west mcdonald i think he's a great lyricist he is uh yeah. he is a great lyricist he's not the one who said that <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, uh let's shift to question three what problems do you commonly fairly commonly face and and what do you do to cope with them or even solve them hmm what problems do I commonly face? Um, getting the gigs that I want. <laughs> that that can be a problem sometimes. Uh, and I remember those days, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, making, you know, enough money to keep it, to make that your living, so where you can fully focus on that and not have to, you know, I've always had to do like side stuff, you know, side jobs and stuff. Um, and in the, just until the last couple years, I've finally kind of gotten to where I can live off of what I do, you know, um, yeah, great. and it's been really hard. I mean, you know, I just turned 40 and, uh, I think I started playing gigs when I was like 19 or 20. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you, I've had to learn, you know, I've I definitely had to be open minded and not, um, not like be upset to have to do certain things, certain kinds of gigs, say, or certain kinds of things that a lot of people would look down upon or not want to do, uh, you know, I've had to be open about that and, you know, to make, to, to truly like to make a living as an artist, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, I've learned that most of the guys that really actually do make a living as an artist, uh, you know, they all, you know, you're going to have to do, do the gigs you don't always want to do as well. Mm. Um, yep. Yeah. You know, I used to arrogantly say way out of my, uh, wheelhouse probably that, if I didn't have to work, I could be an excellent songwriter. But <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Uh, I think you were a great songwriter from what I remember there. Well, thank you, man. That means a lot Blaine, coming from you. Blaine Duncan and the Lookers. That's yeah. a good band, man. I thank you. So we'll go to our final question. Same question for every guest. One of my favorite questions. Uh, and I borrowed this from my friend Corey Hanna's the original Alabama Take podcast, which is on hiatus now, but what's done up real good for you? Can be anything. What's done up real good for me? Uh, hmm. You know, I had something that I was thinking <laughs> about the other day, and now I, I'm spacing on what it was. I had something good. Uh, you know, there's a there's a taco truck in Homewood called Los Valadores. Yeah, and man, 
the chicken tinga tostada. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't found out from that specific truck, man, that tostada is done up real fine. All right, man. I'm talking, I'm talking like, you, you would never think this thing's come out of a truck. I mean, this is like some gourmet, fancy, good stuff. And it's cheap. Man, it's good. That does oh. sound good, yeah. You get, oh, yeah. I'm getting hungry now. They have a steak burrito, too, that's done up real good. I'm telling right. you. It's yeah. a good answer, man. I like it yeah. when, when people go outside the box. I usually <laughs> stick to movies or TV shows, but that's a good answer. Uh, I'm, let's a, rem- I'm big into movies myself, too. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. So Let's remind the audience where they can uh, find your music, enjoy your music, where they can buy uh, the upcoming Blips album, which again, it might already be released by the time our episode drops. Tell them where, where folks can find you. Um, obviously, Spotify, Apple Music, mm-hmm. uh, all the normal places these days. Um, you can go to my website, taylorhollingsworth.org. Okay. Um, and I sell my, I have. I have finally in the last couple of years, uh, or last year really, um, started doing all my albums and everything myself, um, no more labels or anything, I'm just shipping it myself, I pack them myself, uh, everything, so, awesome. um, yeah, you can get records, CDs, cassettes, t-shirts, art, uh, all of that is, is there. You remember this and, bad uh, boy? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Life with the Slow Ear. That's a great um, album. Well, thank you, man. Um, and then the Blip stuff is mm-hmm. Cornelius Chapel Records. Um, and I believe they have some sort of distribution, so it might be in some indie record stores as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I would guess that the, you know, the guys in Tuscaloosa will have it, and I think Seasick here will have it. Um so for the for the blip stuff there um yeah i think that's you know and for for viewers who are who are joining us i recently ordered um an old vulture well record that's currently being repressed by cornelius chapel records and they're yeah. fast on delivery i think i got it the wow. next day so oh, really good kudos to the i think so it was fast i was like there this can't be what i think it is but uh, so, th- yeah. Uh, thanks, man, for taking a few minutes with me today. You've always been a, just a great melodic songwriter, uh, one of my favorite musicians around. And uh, man, thank you so much. Means I'm just lot. thrilled that you're going to be doing uh, new things with the Blips because those guys impress me so much uh, oh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Great, so great take way. care. Uh, thank I you, hope, man. hope to talk to you sooner than eight years from now. But. I know. Yeah, all right. And for our viewers, there's a lot more to be found at thealabamatake.com and on all of our social media sites. Thanks again to Taylor, and I will talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Blaine.